So if you've ever seen an action movie, which I'm sure is probably all of you, you'd know that action movies like explosions. And they're not really too fast about what exactly is exploding from cars to service stations. And even the humble Tasmanian beer atom isn't safe. Now, all I have to do is split this beer atom. Where's that chisel? Uh -huh. But one thing you almost never see is dust explosions, which doesn't really sound like a real thing, but a quick Google search will confirm that not only are they a real thing, but they're also a pretty serious hazard around some agricultural and industrial facilities. And so today we're going to have a look at what exactly are dust explosions and how do they work. Now to talk about dust explosions, the best place to start is by having a look at the surface area to volume ratio. Now, we've had a look at the surface area to volume ratio once before when we're talking about bushfire, because it also plays a really significant role in how bushfires move across the landscape as well. Because as a fire is moving across the landscape, it's generally the fuels that are six millimeters in diameter or less that are consumed in that initial fire front. Now, this isn't to say that the larger fuels don't burn, they certainly do, but they generally burn after that initial fire front has moved through. Now, this is because of that surface area to volume ratio that we've been talking about. And what's actually happening is in larger materials, there's less surface area in comparison to the actual volume of the object that is burning, in comparison to smaller objects, which have a larger surface area in comparison to their volume. Now, the effect of this means that if we subject both of these two things to heat, one of them is going to heat up much faster and begin to pyrolyze, simply because there isn't as much mass inside the material to absorb the heat before the temperature rises. And so what we see is finer materials for instance, in the bushfire setting, materials less than six millimeters in diameter will generally heat up and burn much faster than larger materials, which can then absorb more heat before they will then heat up, pyrolyze and catch fire. And so when we apply this to looking at dust, it's the same basic principle, but on a much finer scale, because when we were talking about materials that were six millimeters in diameter or less, now we're talking about materials that are, well, just much finer, meaning that there's a much larger surface area in comparison to the available material inside the fuel. Now this means that these fuels can heat up very quickly. They can then pyrolyze, give off flammable gases that are available to be burnt in a flame. Now when we're demonstrating this with dust, you can see that as a pile of sawdust, it isn't very reactive because as we heat it, the heat can be dispersed through the rest of the dust, meaning that when it's a pile, it's effectively acting like a much larger fuel source. Whereas when we spread the dust over the Bunsen burner, it becomes airborne and forms a dust cloud. And so the sawdust very quickly ignites. And essentially what we're seeing is a very fast piloted ignition where some of the dust is heated by the Bunsen burner, that dust then pyrolyzes and catches on fire, and then the heat from that fire then heats up the next bit of dust, which then pyrolyzes and catches on fire, and so on and so forth, as the reaction very quickly moves through the dust cloud. And it can do this because as the dust becomes airborne, it becomes mixed with a lot of oxygen, meaning that we now have a lot of fuel and a lot of oxygen all mixed together just waiting for that heat source to pyrolyze the fuels and pilot the ignition so that that chemical chain reaction can kick off and progress through the rest of the dust cloud.
And so this is what we're seeing when we're seeing a dust explosion. We're seeing this flammable dust quickly move through this piloted ignition in such a way that it actually can be quite explosive and cause quite significant damage to any standing structure. And it doesn't necessarily stop with just one ignition because once one dust explosion has been triggered, the pressure created by that can then dislodge more dust, which can then create a secondary or even ongoing explosions throughout the area. And so all of this just goes to demonstrate the importance of firefighters understanding the risks of dust explosions at sites that may contain significant amounts of flammable dust, like flour mills, paper mills, coal mines, and various other industrial facilities. All right, well, that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Um, this is also the 30th video that I've made on this YouTube channel, so I thought I'd probably mention that as just a little bit of a milestone. And I thought in uh, recognition of that, it'd be kind of cool if you want to, uh, chuck down where it is on the planet that you're from, and if you're in a fire brigade, well, what's the name of the brigade? I just kind of thought that'd be cool to see where uh, everyone's tuning in from. Um, apart from that, if you like the video, give it a like. Um, if you've got something else to say, throw it in the comments down below. I do appreciate everything you've got to say. Um, yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.